down to let's say you go down to the streets of Nigeria now and you ask the gate man and say what is the problem oh it's the government we have bad government oh it's Buhari we have bad Buhari oh I say okay you go to the marketplace and you ask the market woman what is the problem oh is the is the uh, government you go to even some some uh, Africans in the diaspora. You go to them. You say, "What is the problem?" They say, "Oh, it's the government." And also, don't forget that British people they are messing with us, and uh, America they are messing. You know, it's the white man. They are doing all these things to us. The China they come there. They take us. And I say, "Oh," I, I, and I ask some of us in the diaspora, "Okay, you, what are you doing?" As, I mean, you've come here, you've acknowledged, uh, acquired some knowledge, you've acquired contacts. What are you doing to resolve the problem, to help our people? Nothing. Again, it goes back to the law of interest. Everybody is here trying to survive on their own first. That's number one. Number two is you go down to the people in, uh, remember I talked about the gate man, the market woman and stuff. The, 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 the point is that gate man that is saying there, the moment you come there and you say, hey, gate man, I need to see your boss. Once they look at you and they see you are well-dressed and they see that whatever you want to see the boss for is important, they will try to find a way to extort something from you. My point, the problem is on everybody. If you say the government is corrupt, all of us, not just the government, all of us. I, I have the fault too. Let me tell you why. Because you know, sometimes people we say, oh, we live in America. It doesn't. No, I have the fault because I, I say to myself, I know how many times I, I, um, I, I go down to do business in Africa in Nigeria. I have an office in Abuja, but I also know how many times I've told myself, look, man. You got to give up on this. These people cannot be helped. You see, just by thinking like that, that's bad. You see what I'm saying? Because who are these people? These people are my people. Who do you expect to help these people? Britain? America? And unfortunately, that is the way most people... There are doctors, in, in, uh, Nigerian doctors in the U.S. There are Nigerian doctors there in Italy. There are Nigerian nurses and all that stuff. Tell them to go down to Nigeria and walk or something. They'll tell you, oh, these people, nothing works there. They'll just, you know, annihilate me, everything, you know. These people. So, so then, if we are not confident or comfortable enough to go and walk among our people, who do we expect to do it? Americans? British people, <laughs> you know, so, so, so really, I think that when it comes to where the, the fault lies, all of us, all of us. Thank, thank you so much for that. That is very important. It is important that, because we, um, also in that book, I was making a reference of a, of a very simple situation in Nigeria, in an analogy, you know, say, for example, if a road accident happened in Nigeria, uh, in, in my village, for example, you will hear people say, ah, maybe it's the witchcraft. <laughs> now I say, okay, now let's try to <laughs> diagnose the problem. If you say it's a witchcraft, I am not a witchcraft, I'm not a witch, <laughs> you are not a witch, the other person is not a witch. So who is going to be responsible? <laughs> Nobody is a witch. But let's flip the argument around. Let's say that accident has happened because the road is bad. At least there can be a solution because we can fix the road. I think by the time we sell our power away, out of, maybe out of ignorance or so, thinking that it is he who is going to do it, it is then I am no, I'm innocent. I cannot do anything about it. Then it go worse and worse and worse until we cannot even do anything anymore. But if we even pretend that we have a stake in it, that we can do something about it. In the little part, in the little angle that you are, start changing it in your own. You don't need to become the president of Nigeria to uh, rectify, because the problem that we have, 
is colossal. It's so big. Because, for example, this is 2022. All the major significant countries in the world have a clear plan of where they are going. Okay, you go to Nigeria and try to see where we are going. You see, so the responsibility sometimes, it goes there, it comes here, but at the end of the day, all of us are part of it. Because it is a system, it's a machine. Maybe I am just that little boat. The machine needs me to function, even though it's a big machine. Because if we remove those little boats in it, then it becomes a shaft, it cannot work anymore. So I have a stake in it. So I'm sticking my name, my face here, talking about it, because I believe that I have a responsibility. Yep, yep. You're, you're very right. You know, you're, you're very, very right, because uh, the moment we say, oh, it's the other person's fault, oh, I'll leave it for the other person to fix, you can be sure that it will never be fixed. Because if you've ever tried to talk to government people in Africa, I can tell you that they will give you all good reasons why it's not their fault. I'm telling you. They, 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 and they will give you a list of wonderful things that they've, they've done. And in the end, they will tell you that it's the people. That the people are not appreciative. The people are not contributing. The people are not doing this. The people are not doing that. The people are not doing that. So everybody has an excuse to make. You know, they, they, there was something that they started in Nigeria, and I don't know if it ever got traction. It's something called uh, the change begins with me. I, it, see, if people had just really put some thought into that to think about it, then people will see how wonderful that is. The change begins with me. And also, as we say the change begins with me, let's also remind ourselves, the sacrifice begins with me. Also. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Also. Yeah. <laughs> the sacrifice begins with me. I see you, you are coming to my organ to do business. I know that I can easily extort 5,000 naira from you as bribe before I open the door for you. I can make the sacrifice and say, okay, you know that 5,000 naira, I'm not going to extort it. I'm just going to let it go. The sacrifice begins with me. But the truth is that the guy who is going to open the door, the excuse he will give himself is, oh, my old guy is chopping. Why shouldn't I chop myself? You know, this is the only way. After all, the salary they are paying me is small. And I always tell them, I said, the funny thing is, is only when you are poor that you will have this mind that the salary is too small. I said, the moment you get to a certain stage, you see that money is never enough. It's never enough. So it has, you have to remove your mindset from the fact that, oh, if, if they pay me 100000 I will do a better job. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a better job depends on how you see your job, how you take responsibility and stuff like that. Because the moment they pay you 100000 you see that you, ha you have more things that you need money for. And then you start saying, look, man, I really need to be making 150000 in this job. This 100000 is too small. So, you know, and, and you know, because I, I, I always hear people say, oh, do you know how much they are paying that woman? And you expect her to stand there for, for, for eight hours and stuff. I'm like, yeah, it has nothing to do with money. It has something to do with who the woman is. If the woman is a certain type of person, she will know that, hey, this is my job. And even though this is what I'm, I'm what I, this is the amount I'm making for now, I will continue to do my job until I decide not to do it again.